Hey guys, welcome to Get Busy Watching. I'm your host, Honest Dan. Let's talk movies. A boy may get older, but that doesn't mean he grows up. I love sharks, and I love monster movie sharks. Some things little boys never grow out of. Right? It's time to talk about Deep Blue Sea. If you missed my Halloween special last year, I put down that 1999's Deep Blue Sea is among my favorite horror films of all time. For all intents and purposes, it's my favorite B-movie. I love the acting, which seems uncharacteristically committed from the actors. Is that a goddamn shark broke through that door? I expect so. You expect so? Huh. Well, well, well. Am I the only asshole down here who thinks that a tad bit odd? Made me a fan of Thomas Jane, Sam Jackson, Stellan Skarsgård, all of whom would go on to be actors for Marvel, and Saffron Burroughs for I swear to God, not perverted reasons. <clears throat> the gruesome violence from the shark attacks. Fat butt parrots. Epic Sam Jackson speech. Well, they can get a whole lot worse. So we're not going to fight anymore. We're going to pull together and we're going to find a way to get out of here. I loved the shit out of this movie. For the longest time, it was my favorite movie. And to this day, I still love it. I even prefer it over Jaws. Yes, the comment section is open. Please send me your hate mail. I do not care. That's how much I love Deep Blue Sea. You don't see what we've done here. And what you've done is taken God's oldest killing machine and given it will and desire. What you've done is knocked us all the way to the bottom of the goddamn food chain. Like most fans, I've been clamoring for a sequel to the beloved 99 horror action flick ever since. We prayed and prayed to whatever merciful God may listen to us. And lo and behold, we were heard. Our prayers were answered. But alas, not by any merciful God. Oh no. No, that would imply that we are loved and wouldn't find ourselves drowning in a pandemic alongside protests and riots against systemic racism alongside assholes who refuse to wear masks and throw childish tantrums when asked to, making the situation far worse for the rest of us. No, 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 no. This is reality. And the reality is giant evil gods hurt us. Yes, reality, realism, truth, evil gods hurt us. You know, sometimes fan bases really need to shut their fucking holes. I blame you, I blame you, but most of all, I blame you! Don't yell at me! Shut your mouth, ho! You're the reason we can't have nice things! You're why we get things like Deep Blue Sea 2! This straight-to-DVD flick was abysmal, as you can probably guess. Admittedly, I can barely remember a lot of it, but from what I do remember, it recycled the original flick, but worse. The CGI was terrible. Sure, the OG DBS's CG didn't hold up, boy that was a lot of letters I just said, but that's because it was still a budget film back in 99, but back then, the CG wasn't that bad. 2 was made in 2018 and looks far worse than the effects from 99. Yes, yes, straight to DVD budget, I don't care. The piss poor effects wouldn't be so bad if the rest of the movie was any good. It's not. 
One of the things that I appreciated in the OG flick was how subtle the intelligence of the Mako sharks were. They didn't swim up to windows and watch people. They weren't listening in on conversations. Yes, Two's bull sharks absolutely did this. It's obvious and it's beyond silly. Trackers embedded in their fins, we can always find them, whether they're here or out in the deep blue sea. And once my experiment is over, I will simply kill them. All of them, so don't worry about the liability. It even stops being a shark movie and ends up being a piranha movie for a bit, introducing swarms of baby sharks that kill people, which I didn't like. It just didn't capture the heart and soul <laughs> Hmm. Didn't capture what made the original flick so popular. If I'm honest, it's not like I would have known what I would have wanted out of a out of a sequel to Deep Blue Sea, but I know I didn't want this. But now that I know what a sequel looks like, I don't need another one. Yeah, I'm saying it. I don't need another Deep Blue Sea. I don't need a Deep Blue Sea 3. God damn it! As of the writing of this, I've not actually watched the movie. The trailer doesn't look promising, making it look like climate change is what's making these sharks aggressive, rather than science gone wrong. Eh, I'm just not excited. But it stars Tanya Raymond from Lost. Yeah, let's get this over with. This is my honest opinion of Deep Blue Sea 3. By the way, I'd be far more excited for this movie if the title read out like this. Missed opportunity. Set in the small fictional floating town of Little Happy, Dr. Emma Collins, played by Tanya Raymond, has dedicated her life to studying and protecting sharks. However, things get complicated real fast. Her ex-boyfriend Richard, played by Nathaniel Buzalik, sorry if I mispronounced that, visits them with a crew of his own who are hunting a trio of super intelligent bull sharks that threaten to eat everything around them. When lives are taken, Richard's intentions are seen as less than pure, and he intends to capture the sharks for big corporate research. Soon, lines are drawn, and the struggle for survival becomes paramount. It sucks. It sucks because of course it sucks. But, if you've seen the second movie before, then by comparison, it's actually not that bad. It has some legitimately entertaining moments. Before I start with the negatives, as they'll be pretty easy to broach, I wanted to quickly apologize for the atrocious quality of the film footage you're about to see. Heads up in that regard. The film's faults are easily guessed. The writing is lame and cliched, loaded with your standard, horrid exposition dumps. Listen, Sean, I know my dad was your CEO and you feel like you owe him, but I'm way too old for parenting advice. And there's a random and mostly useless sub-subplot involving a great white shark that recognizes Emma and their friends. Sally? We're old friends. This is mentioned one time. The nice great white saves Emma one time. And that's it. It doesn't even fight the bull sharks. Wasted opportunity. But all that's easy pickings and something that anyone could have guessed. Let's talk about more pressing issues. Character motivations. Specifically, from our main character, Emma. So a big plot point is that she's angry at Richard for wanting to capture these bull sharks alive. Why? Okay, fine, I guess it's just her being a shark lover, but she's seen firsthand how dangerous these particular bull sharks are and have proven to be able to kill great whites. They're pack hunters, which is uncharacteristic of bull sharks. They've already killed a guy and would go on to kill more guys. Why not let these suspicious dudes capture them? What do their ulterior motives matter if it solves a problem? More than anything, the intention is to capture them alive. You'd think the more humane character would approve of that bit as opposed to killing them outright like some want to do. I never truly understood Emma's hostility. One of the core elements that you need in a Deep Blue Sea movie is science gone wrong. Want to cure Alzheimer's? Make the shark's brain bigger, therefore make them smarter. I know, I didn't say the movie was good, I just said I loved it. Point is, there's something major that needs fixing, fake science figured it out, and that spells immediate disaster for the humans. 
This movie doesn't do that. Oh sure, it talks about it, lazily connecting this movie to the previous two flicks. It tries to explain cure for Alzheimer's, whatever the sequel was trying to do. But this one makes a passing remark that the big evil corporation that he works for wants the sharks to make something that makes people feel things. If we can develop the same kind of bonded people, imagine how we can change the world to make humanity feel, Emma, and from that, Stop it. Even with context, I'd understand it no better or worse than if my ears were next to a blender, but at least with the blender, I get a yummy smoothie out of it. Bottom line, there's no science gone wrong in this. It's just picking up the pieces of the previous flick and throwing in intentions that we don't see established or have any real connection to. But some of the biggest issues that I had with this movie are the deaths. There's no brutality to him. Look at this. This guy just hovers along with no lower half, which <laughs> looks pretty silly. How does this even work? He was just hovering along and the sharks ninja'd his legs off and he died as he rendezvoused with the rest of the group? Did this dude die not knowing that he was bisected? It's obvious shock violence devoid of logic. If this were a true Deep Blue Sea movie, that dude would have been alive and well, and then the sharks would come along and rip him apart. Remember, the appeal of the original flick was that we saw the attacks. The movie was unapologetically violent, and we relished it. Not seeing a shark attack in Deep Blue Sea, as far as I'm concerned, is a cardinal sin. Fuck, even the sequel got this down. It was over the top, and not at all the kind of shark attack violence that I would want to see, but we saw the violence as it happened to these yummy human snacks. None of this post-mortem shit. Look at that. We even see it happen twice. Fucking outrageous. And even when we do see one, it's standard fare. Or a death so utterly silly that even Sharknado would find it underwhelming. This is the closest we get to a brutal death scene. One. One. That's it. That's embarrassing. Hell, there's even deaths in this movie that the sharks aren't even responsible for. Sure, that was present in the first movie too, but those indirect deaths were a direct result of sharks. One dude literally just stabbed by another character. So lame. But I can't rail on this movie forever, as I did mention, it does have a few redeeming qualities. Strangely enough, I really like the setting. When it comes to movies doing ocean appreciation and it takes time to show marine wildlife, beautiful colors and what have you, I'm easily engrossed. I love seeing underwater stuff, I don't know what to tell ya. But more importantly, I really like the floating town of Little Happy. It's no super over-the-top underwater research facility that breaks down in some glorious fashion, but I'll take the pure visual aesthetic. So production value, while cheap, did well for themselves in terms of sets. Could have done more with it in terms of danger for the humans, since the water level is so high, therefore the shark attacks should have been more frequent or would have lent its way to more unwanted destruction, but c'est la vie. I will also give credit that the CG sharks don't actually look that bad. Okay, they're still worse than the 99 Mako sharks, and the obvious CG does rear its head more times than it doesn't, but every so often, there's a shot that made me go, Oh hey, a CG artist went above and beyond that time. But now, it's time to talk about my favorite parts of this movie, but sadly, they are spoiler moments, so if you'd rather not have them spoiled, jump to this time code. I love a good ragdoll stunt, so there's this. You never see stuff like that anymore. Usually the explosion covers up the character in question, and then in a separate cut, they're flying. Or the occasional blood splatter, but a good ragdoll, I think, is really hard to find these days. This was a pretty badass sacrifice right here. Yeah. Yeah. 
A bit of a cop-out killing two sharks at once, but when you're a badass going out in a badass way, it's hard to complain too much. <laughs> and my favorite moment in the entire movie. You're right. It is a no-brainer. I would rather die with her than live like you. <laughs> it's no Sam Jackson, but it got me laughing so hard. I had to pause the movie to get all of the laughter out of me. <laughs> okay, so here's why it was so funny. I half expected this character to die when he jumped in the water. I complained and said, oh no, missed opportunity, and proceeded to pout. Then Richard's little stand my ground speech was so cheesy that I simply chalked it up to even more bad writing and half expected this movie to keep the maybe romance between him and Emma until the end. But nope, he got a pretty damn hilarious death and that alone made this movie worth watching. I would rather die with her than live like you. <laughs> Overall, by no means a good movie, and if you're anything like me who only acknowledges the first one, then this will not be satisfying. It's not in the same league as the original, but I have to admit that I enjoyed it a little more than I thought I would. My honest rating for Deep Blue Sea 3, a strong 3 out of 5. Thanks so much for watching you guys, I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Stay safe and healthy out there. Please wear a mask if you go out. Hope to see you soon.